One of the real valuable tools we have at a feed yard, some feed yards use them, some don't, is the horse. And the horse is an expensive, valuable part of our toolbox. So when we, the way we take care of the horse nutritionally, vet care, foot care, all those things are so important for the longevity of the horse and keeping him a valuable tool to help us in the feedlot pens. So I'm just going to start out, we'll talk about, uh, of course we're saddling outside because it's too dark in the barn, but we'll just, uh, we'll saddle him up out here. And the first thing I, you've got to be careful of is a pulling back horse. And so when I'm saddling a horse, here's a, a tie that I like to use that, that will keep him here, but if something happens, I'm still safe. It can give a little bit. Now, the first thing I want to do is clean my horse's feet. And I see a lot of pen riders, they'll have a hoof pick right on their saddle. I pack a Leatherman in my pocket, and so I'll clean this horse's feet and check out his shoes, make sure there's no loose shoes or anything like that. So I'll, I've already cleaned his feet out, but I'll just show you how I would go about picking up these hind feet, cleaning them out, setting them down soft, and going on. Now, feedlot horses get rode longer, probably not harder, but longer hours than any other horse I know. And if you don't have a good fitting saddle, and if you don't take care of your horse's back, you'll get saddle sores. I don't mind saddle marks, but saddle sores are real bad. And what I like to do when I'm grooming my horse every morning to start out, I start out with my bare hand. And I can just go through and I'll feel the horse and I'll feel under here where I can't see, but I can feel with my hand if there's a sore or mud or burrs, I can feel that on this side. I'll switch hands and I'll go on this side and I'll check out everywhere the saddle's gonna go. Myself, I like to take this part of the mane and roach it off. So it's not underneath my saddle pad and wouldn't soar the horse up there. But this, I'll just make sure there's no burrs or nothing in it to keep that nice and soft. All right, so then once I'm done with my hand, if he has some mud or something, I can always use my curry comb underneath a brush, whatever it takes. And of course, you can brush him wherever you want, but the main part is where the saddle goes. Make sure that all the hair, like this horse, he's got a few bite marks that I can feel with my hand. I might not have seen him with my eye, but I can feel him with my hand. And I'll just make sure that there's no danger of creating a sore-backed horse. I'd rather turn him out heal him up then get it for a week rather than sore him up for two months or get him to having bad habits like kicking or whatever when I'm saddling him up. Okay, your pad is real important. The higher withered a horse, the more pad you need. This is a real nice pad. It's got a cutout in it that allows the withers to come up through. It's got an over pad. And when I put the pad on, I put it on forward, slide it back to go the hair with all the same direction. So I don't rough that hair up when I put my saddle pad on. Now I like to, uh, with my saddle, and there's lots of different kinds of saddle. I'm riding my Texas saddle today. I might ride my Oregon saddle tomorrow. But whatever kind of saddle you have, I see in the barn here, we have some Charo saddles. Whatever kind of saddle you have, it doesn't have to be new. It doesn't have to be fancy but it has to fit. These horses are ridden so long and so hard that we'll really sore them up if we don't have a good fitting saddle. When I throw my saddle on, I try to be smooth and set it down real soft. When I put my hat on in the morning, I, I don't jam it on. I try to put it on smooth and get it to fit. And I try to do my saddle the same exact way. When I get my horse saddled, I'll make sure I've hung my uh, cinches up on this side. I'll walk to this side and I'll make sure all my gear is in good shape. I don't have mud or burrs in my cinch and my back cinch is in good repair. All the leather is good 
and I'll just do a, a basic feel and I can tell my saddle is going to fit the horse, make sure my strings are out from under, under my saddle. And as soon, first thing I'm going to do from here is I'm going to pick this, I'm going to pick this saddle pad up into the gullet of my saddle. That'll give me some room up in there. So when I come around and when I cinch him, it doesn't pull down and make too much pressure on the horse's back. Now this saddle is a seven eighths rig saddle. It sits, the cinch sits back farther. So I have to move my stirrup up to cinch him. And this allows my saddle to sit forward farther on the horse. It puts me more in balance. That's why I like the seven eighths rig. Now here, when I reach, there's two different ways to reach for your cinch. I like to reach with my right hand. I'll put my left hand on the horse's neck, secure him, and then I'll, I'll try to reach and grab. And I'll just hold that cinch up into his belly while I put the wraps around my saddle. Now, as you notice, I didn't tie the horse solid here. Some horses, when you start to cinch them, they'll step back and if they hit the end of your rope, it'll cause them to flip or pull back or you'll cause your horse to become a pullback horse. So I'll just, I'll push against him, lift up on my right hand and my latigo, just barely cinch it enough to kind of hold it. I don't want to over cinch him while he's sit, standing here. I'll reach with my left hand with my back cinch, help with my right, same thing there, just snug. Now the, the tightness of your back cinch is real important. A lot of people ride their back cinch real loose, and in some places, I, that's okay. But here in the feed yard where we have gate rods, things sticking out where it could run in between that and the back cinch and cause a real big wreck, you really need to be aware of where your back cinch is. I really don't even need a back cinch with this 7 8 or 3 quarter rig saddle. Sometimes I'll take them off in the feed yard just to keep those things from happening because I'm not roping anyway. But with a full double, you need a back cinch and make sure it's tight enough where uh, something can't get stuck. Even a cow's horn could get in there. So be very aware of where your back cinch is. So that's a pretty easy saddling, getting him ready. That's everything's good there. So now I'll, I'll look things over, make sure my strings are all out, my saddle's in the right position. And I will go ahead and now I'll be very careful that now if we're in the barn, a lot of times the first thing you have to do is step backwards to get out of the tie stall. But be real careful. Sometimes when you cinch a horse and he's tight, it'll cause him to run backwards or flip over. So I like to be able to turn my horse. Now take his hind quarters across and just watch him as he steps forward. And I'll make sure that all four feet, nothing's lame. I'll lead him around here and watch my horse as I lead him around checking everything out, making sure everything's okay. Everything checks out, now it's time to put the snaffle bit on. Okay, 